Well, my name is Maureen Cassidy, and I will be giving my presentation on Viviparous Georgianus, also known as the Banded Mystery Snail, uh, within the lakes of Wisconsin. Identification of the species, Viviparous Georgianus, also known as the Banded Mystery Snail, is a freshwater snail species. Um, they have a thin, smooth shell, greenish brown in color with four distinct bands present around the whorl of the body. The species has a right-handed shell with an operculum that acts as a trapdoor at the opening of the shell. One-year-old snails are typically 12 to 17 millimeters long and reach a maximum height of 45 millimeters at full growth. Similar species from left to right, um, we have the Banda mystery snail, the native brown mystery snail, and the Chinese mystery snail. The brown mystery snail, as I said, is a native species, uh, the smallest of the three mystery snails, and the shell is typically a brown to an olive green coloring without any bandings and has the right hand opening with the operculum as well. The Chinese mystery snail is another non-native species. It is the largest of the three mystery snails and has a uniform light to dark green olive coloring with the same trapdoor as the other two. All three are called mystery snails due to their ability to labor live young. The native range of the banded mystery snail is in North America from central Florida up to northern Illinois and throughout the eastern part of the Mississippi drainage basin. Today, they are generally found in the northeastern part of the United States as well as the Midwest. I have a video of the spread that demonstrates um, the spread throughout time. So as I will talk in my next slide, they originate in the Hudson drainage basin in New York. Um, and as trade continues, as um, boat traffic continues, as lakes become more eutrophic, um, the species continues to spread. So in the late 1900s, they are pretty well established in the northeastern United States. And by the 2000s, um, northern Wisconsin and Minnesota um, have established populations as well that we can see from this graph. and they just continue to spread throughout time. Back to the presentation. So as I said before, they were first introduced to the Hudson Drainage Basin um, in 1854 by a conchiologist, someone who studies mussels, who purposely released 200 snails um, into the drainage basin. However, the first population failed um, more individuals were released later in 1867, resulting in the first established population in the Hudson drainage basin. The species then became established throughout northeastern and midwestern United States as far back as the early 1900s due to the international release of the aquarium trade, boat traffic, and a variety of other aspects. Here is a little meme uh, regarding habitat and invasive species. So the preferred habitat of the banded mystery snail, the species, as I said before, is a freshwater species. It prefers eutrophic streams, lakes, and ponds with little to no flow. It prefers soft, silty, and or rocky substrate, but are present in a variety of habitats, including sand and detritus bottoms. Individuals are generally found in waters with pHs between 6.3 and 8.5 enough calcium for them to build their shells. Banded mystery snails often live in high densities, sometimes up to 850 individuals in one square meter. They inhabit shallow waters in the spring through the fall and move out to deeper waters to overwinter. They will bury under the substrate for a period of inactivity. These snails generally experience the most growth when the waters are the warmest in the spring and the summer, although reduced growth still occurs throughout the fall and winter. Banded mystery snails are known to be filter feeding detritivores with species graze on diatom clusters found on silt and mud substrates. 
They may require the ingestion of a few grit samples to break down the algae. With a variety, with a variable diet, it will readily consume a herbaceous diet of algae and diatoms, but may also consume fish eggs. Reproduction of the snails. The lifespan of the female's banded mystery snail is typically between 28 to 48 months, while males only live from 18 to 36 months. The females grow larger and faster than the males, and reproduce, reproductive females are typically 16 millimeters or larger. Breeding occurs in the spring. The females lay the eggs singly in album-filled capsules and carry the eggs for 9 to 10 months before giving birth to the live young. Females can have anywhere from 4 to 80 young per female, on average closer to 11. Some populations are known to reach sexual maturity within one to two years and reproduce more than once in their life. Other populations don't reach sexual maturity until three years of age and only reproduce once before dying. Now for the ecological, economical, and cultural effects that these snails have. This study is done on the predation of largemouth bass um, by the banded mystery snails. So professionals from the New York Cooperative Fisheries Unit and the Entomology and Limonology Department in Cornell University designed a study that looked at the predation of largemouth bass embryos. They observed effects within the laboratory and the pond enclosure. They found similar results for both. In the laboratory setting, live embryos remained 85% still around, while with snails, the population reduced to an average of 2.7% embryos left. Uh, they also did a study that had 100 dead embryos in the laboratory with the snails, and the snails consumed all 100 dead embryos. In the pond enclosure, the snails have other things to feed on, um, but the embryos also have other predators. So with the absence of snails, we see here that it still decreased quite a, much, quite a bit, but not as much as when the snails uh, were present. Going on to the next slide, um, this is a graph of, or a chart of the similar graph. So basically we see here that with the snails, um, we have averages of 29 to 25 uh, embryos left out of 100. And without the snails, we see 60 to 65 left. That being said, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a cost analysis on the largemouth baths embryo reduction um, with the lakes and what it costs Wisconsin. So I estimated that banded mystery snails cause a $20,700,000 decrease in the revenue each year from the loss of largemouth bass embryos. And here's how I got those numbers. So there are approximately 15,074 lakes in Wisconsin. 560 lakes have established banded mystery snails. That means that 4% of total lakes in Wisconsin have established band and mystery snail populations. The Wisconsin DNR did a study that found that fishing generates $2.3 billion each year in revenue for the state of Wisconsin. The math that I'm going to do assumes that each lake generates the same amount of revenue, which is obviously not true, but um, necessary to assume for this purpose. Um, so 4%, which is the population of, or the lakes with established band and mystery snail populations, 4% of $2.3 billion is $92 million. The Wisconsin DNR also found that bass are anglers' second favorite target. I made an assumption that 30% of anglers fish specifically for largemouth bass. 30% of 92 million is $27,600,000. If the snails from the previous study decrease the largemouth bass population by 75%, 75% of 27,600,000 is $20,700,000, which is the number that appears here. Another diminished aesthetic. 
Once the snails die, the empty shells oftentimes will wash up onto the shore. As you can see from this photo, the visual appearance of the lake shore has been diminished by the dead snail shells. And while it looks bad, the smell is typically even worse. According to an article written by the professor in environmental economics from the University of Ohio State, tourists traveling to a beach would willingly pay an extra $12.91 each trip if the beach contained 25% less debris. This translates into a total of $29.5 million for marine beaches with a reduction of debris. Although these are freshwater lakes with snail shells, I still think the idea is the same. People are willing to pay more for rental houses, travel further, and in general, just spend more money to have a cleaner lake. The species is known also, banded mystery snails, are known to be intermediate hosts for tematodes. Tematodes are parasitic flatworms that sexually reproduce in invertebrates in vertebrates. As a result, banded mystery snails have been spreading this parasite to aquatic birds, specifically the ones pictured here, bluebills, resulting in large die-offs. In 2007, over 3,000 birds died in northern Wisconsin lakes as a result of ingesting the infected snails, with many more birds unable to fly due to the infection. Tomb toads do not typically kill their hosts. The massive mortalities we have seen are scattered throughout diverse wildlife populations in the upper Midwest are most likely attributed to the unusual high rates of the snail ingestions as well as the trematode infections. So since ducks disperse readily on a continental level scale, federal and state agencies have signaled their intent to focus the efforts on the control of trematodes by controlling the snails. Prevention is key. Manual removal of banded mystery snails is possible, but probably impractical in most situations. Several chemical pesticides have been used to control snails in aquatic and aquaculture ponds, but the banded mystery snail's thick operculum makes them less susceptible to these chemicals. Since most native snails do not have the upper liquid, it makes them more susceptible to the chemicals, which is the reverse effect of what we would like to see. And unfortunately, to date, there is no effective biological control agent that anyone knows of. These are the sources that I use throughout my presentation. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch it, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.